Hello my dear ones, um, it's me again. Today I read you the first chapter, means the foreword of the book, um, Forgiveness, the Right Cheat Chick Hits Back, it's the Kindle title, and as paperback it's available with the title um, Forgive For All Victims, Forgiveness and Justice, The True Teachings of Jesus, Correction of the Wrong Christian Dogmas About Forgiving, or The Right Cheek Hits Back. The book is available, see the link um, below, in German and English. So, I read um, the first uh, forward chapter. First, I show you the content table. Um, it's about, uh, the chapters are the following. Forward, the practice in Christian churches and families, guilt, forgiveness, posture and hypocrisy. A self-test for the wrongdoers and uh, victims. Um, next chapter, the real Jesus, who was he really? This chapter is mind-blowing, can tell. What is forgiveness? Conceptual clarification. Forgiveness, an Old Testament principle. What does the Torah teach about forgiveness? 70 times 70. Forgiveness as a free pass. The New Testament misinterpretation. What did re Jesus really teach about forgiveness? Punching ball Christians or the bloody right cheek. Forgiveness is not a must. Things that cannot be forgiven. The pardoned adulteress or is sin not important? What does genuine Christian behavior look like? The right love of neighbors and enemies. Stop Christian hypocrisy and punishing of victims. Get real and fair. So, this is the content of my book and I strongly recommend to read it because it will blow your mind and for the first time you will really be a Christian. So let's start with the foreword. I am reading from now on. Foreword. Have you ever been insulted or exposed by a Christian and just smiled and put up with it because you wanted to be and look like a Christian? Because you think you have to forgive and you have even to turn your right cheek and you have to put yourself behind in any case? Have you ever just let an impudence or a lie stand without defending yourself? Have you ever been told by a Christian or even by a pastor that you should just forgive? Not too untypical. There are real sins of others against you, such as fraud, theft, character assassination, or even murdering of a family member, which eat you up at the inside, but which you should not discuss and address because otherwise you would be considered a bad Christian and possibly as hard and unforgiving? I have wanted to write this book for a long time, but other things always took precedence. Based on a recent, actually once again typically Christian hypocrit hypocritical incident that really hurt me by a woman from whom I thought she was my friend, Jesus literally pushed me towards it and almost forced me, I just couldn't resist, to finally tackle this thorny topic of forgiveness that I had for a long time already clarified for myself on the basis of scripture. And to write about it now, because through this recent incident, I clearly noticed how screwed up people socialized as Christians often are, how self-righteous and insulting they are, hitting others with their misinterpretation of the Bible and even with the words of the Lord, and how unfair, unrighteous those people are. Then, after decades full of Christian false teachings and attacks, my barrel was finally full. The fact that he makes me write this book now also means for me that the Lord considers this topic to be extremely important for the end times and finally wants to put it straight with this book and with me. Since I have not only been born again for over 30 years, but also 
they have a lot of life experience and experience in various churches and with many different people and Christians. And I do a lot of research in the scriptures. As a new philologist, I also have very, I also am very familiar with the original text and apocrypha and also have some psychological degrees. And I have worked with over 20,000 people in my job as a consultant. And by this, I'm probably far better qualified than many Christian preachers, so-called preachers, to teach about all this. Because often the whole thing about forgiveness is presented as a must and almost is treated as a free pass for the bad, cold, false people and egotistical Christians and teachers and narcissists and so on. Who use this fall, these false Christian interpretations and dogmas as a weapon for themselves um, against the good people. As we can see always and right now in the different scandals in churches. This also, and not too infrequently, as a leader, as per perpetrator. This idiot forgiveness practice is just so convenient. You do not have to be intelligent or righteous to just say, just forgive, you must forgive. Anybody can do that even a monkey. It is also for this reason that anybody can be a pastor, so-called, or build up a congregation or a church, especially in the US, but also in Europe and in Germany and other countries. This is so easy and convenient, right? And if it's unjust, that does not matter to those Christians. Important is being paid anyway. That is because justice almost became a curse word among so-called Christians because they and their leaders prefer to follow the special gospel of Saul, Paul, like he says himself in his letters that he has an own gospel, instead of following the clear rules and teachings of Jesus and of the Father and of the true twelve apostles and of his brothers who really heard his teachings during his lifetime on earth from the beginning. There were only 12 real apostles. See also the stools in heaven. And that's the reason. Especially introverted people and the weak ones are downright emotionally abused in many communities by egotistical, and often extroverted pseudo-Christians. And sometimes they are not just emotionally abused. In addition, these cold people twist and misinterpret, misinterpret the scripture at will, blindly and mercilessly use them just to look good themselves. One would like to take the sharp weapon away from those people completely. They cannot handle it and endure themselves and others with it. That will certainly be an issue in their final judgment as well. Churches, congregations, pastors, elders and leaders of any kind, etc., who allow something like this to happen, or even do it themselves, should be ashamed. And abolished. For all those who suffer with me from this false, hypocritical and therefore diabolical forgiveness attitude, and yes, it is diabolic, I am writing this book. You can then throw it at the cold ones described above. Maybe they will at least understand it when it hurts. Because for quite a few of them, only a drastic cure can help. Otherwise, they might even land where it is hot. Possibly together with their false teachings and teachers and those who tolerate and approve of it. That's why they, in particular, can be happy that they now have this book and can still repent, correct themselves and make amends. All of this possibly publicly, or you certainly won't get away with less. Please don't take it amiss that I sometimes write very passionately and sometimes also a little annoyed and furious, or that I come across that way to you. 
This just expresses my pain concerning the false teachings that have bothered me as a rather introverted woman who now looks back on her life at an advanced age and realizes how many wrong things and also sin, sins have arisen as a result and that it has also led to hypocrisy in myself. Yes, it can be, I can be a little angry about that. I allowed a lot of things to be done to me because of this, especially by other Christians. And I suffered a lot from it. There is a real reason why Jesus makes me write this subversive book now. Incidentally, I would like to clear up another prejudice and misconception among Christians and teachers, the matter of being nice and humble, which, from their point of view, Christians generally have to be. Many Christians are taught, even sometimes from childhood, not to be angry or furious, definitely not show if they are, that would not be humble and devout enough and therefore wrong. Anyone who is angry or even furious about the sins that are being done to him or others is even told to pull him or herself together. It would not be humble and gentle enough to act like this. One should behave Christian and should just forgive, preferably without ever having talked about it. Well, what do you think this leads to? Sure, to hypocrisy. And Jesus hates nothing more than hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is the mother of all sins. In fact, most Christians would personally throw out Jesus today because in their twisted views, he would not be meek enough after their own definition. He would be too direct, too angry, even too furious about the sins in the churches and about the false teachings in teachers and shepherds. Bet? All this they do not want to hear. They prefer to wallow in their unjust pseudo-holy teachings, blabberings and fuss. One thing I can tell you, you must prepare yourselves, for he will come back mightily and angry, yes, angry. Also, and maybe mainly, about these false teachings, about these great injustices, especially by Christians and in churches, and their shares, stocks, their willingness bondage to bad governments, corrupt people, and so on. We have seen this all in Corona and lockdowns. Devilish. Just a little conceptual clarification first. Yes, it is true that Jesus said of himself that he was meek and very humble of heart. Only he said that in Hebrew. And there, these words do not mean be nice and sweet and submissive or pretend, as in English or German or Greek. But it means something else. Being humble, that relates to God, not primarily to humans. Being humble means that he is lis listening to God, Yeshua listening to God, doing his commandments, not his own crooked thoughts, and doing God's righteousness. And that is why Yeshua always, that, uh, that, uh, and that is what Jesus always did. And he was humble by this. Be meek, as it was also said of Moses, does as well not mean always being nice and kind and smiling at bad things and burdening victims additionally, no. We also see this in the behavior of Jesus. He was angry. He was annoyed. Read it. And so was Moses sometimes. And I am currently too, especially when it comes to forgiveness and vaccination. Sorry, you will feel that in that book. It comes through, although you or because I put it under him. More than once, Moses and Jesus were sour and angry. So it cannot be a sin to be angry about wrong things, crimes and bad people. Therefore, that cannot be meant by gentle. No, to be meek means to restrain yourself, to control oneself and not let legitimate, or res uh, legitimate and just anger or even holy anger escalate into unjust violence or even unjust bloody deeds. Therefore, meek should better be translated in our times with self-controlled. Uh, self -controlled. So it is not unchristian to be sour or angry about sins and false teachings and preachers and prophets, no. 
just look at the behavior of Jesus and learn from him, not from false teachers, bad priests, wrong prophets and apostles. Please sweep all this fake rubbish out of your minds and hearts. Learn who he really is and what he really meant. I very much hope that the book will help you and I would also be pleased if you would read it well, if you could take some good points out of it and it helps you to correct and heal yourself from wrong teachings and thus prepare yourself better for his second coming and for his judgment. Of course, no book is perfect. But if there are a few good things in it for you, I ask you for a good rating and review on Amazon. As an author, you also expose yourself and writing and self-publishing takes a lot of time that hardly ever pays off. I wrote it for you. I already thank you in advance. When I quote the Bible here, I usually do so on the basis of the Luther Bible translated into English but I usually change it and create my own translation because I'm not too bad with original texts, semantics, context knowledge, etc. The original of this book is German under the title as Paperback Vergebung und Gerechtigkeit, die wahren Lehren von, Lehren von Jesus und die rechte Backe steckt zurück. I translated it myself into English and I hope that you can understand what I want to say. Please excuse if there are some mistakes in it. I did my best. I wish you a fresh and true new view on the Holy Ghost, on the highest God and his Son. See you, and I would be very pleased if you would give me a lovely like and uh, subscribe to my subversive channel. So goodbye, my dear ones.